So welcome back to this last part of the testing lecture. Uh, I'll now go through a number of te uh, system testing tools. And this is just to give you examples of what you could do. Uh, it's not a representative thing necessarily. So in many cases, it's also perfectly possible to use unit testing tools to do system testing. Uh, it's just that some tools might be more suitable. And I'll start with one that is fairly uh, popular in the web industry, and that's Selenium. And there are two versions of it. There's Selenium IDE, and there's something called Selenium WebDriver. I'll mainly focus on the IDE. I just mentioned the other one shortly afterwards. Um, what Selenium IDE allows you to do is basically record and replay. So you can record something you're doing in a website, for example, um, and then you can replay it later on. So you can kind of run it again and see if it still works. This has to be some kind of uh, either regression testing that you test the bug or something that tests functionality that already exists. So it's hard to write a test that uh, does not yet, uh, that is not yet implemented like in a test driven way. It works through the UI. So f through a website, for example, and it tests, of course, the entire thing. So if, if you click on a button and that calls something on the server and that checks something on the database and sends the response back, uh, all of that is, of course, checked through the UI. So you press a button and you see what comes back uh, and you check the result. This is really good for acceptance testing because, as you will see in a moment, this is actually quite easy. It's also great for exploratory testing. So you can just explore, you can click around the website, you can try out things uh, and you can record that. And later on, you can just replay it. So you can say, this was a good test. Maybe this is something I should keep for the future. What Selim IDE does is it, uh, it records what you click on by checking uh, the HTML code. So it basically checks, are you clicking on a diff tag? Are you clicking on an element that has a certain class or ID, uh, or are you clicking on something that has a certain text? So it tries to find the unique identifier for whatever you're doing. Um, it's mainly a black box thing, so it's not so easy to check the internals of the code. So you, it's at least, I'm not an expert on Selenium IDE, but it's at least not straightforward to check whether something has been sent to the server in the right way. But you can, of course, check what comes back. Uh, if you're interested, you can look up the tool uh, on this website. I'll just do a basic scenario by recording something on, on Piazza. Uh, and I don't yet know what to do, but let's see. And I have installed the Selenium IDE plugin for Firefox. So I'll just click on that. Uh, and I can say, let's open an existing project. I have no idea where I saved it. So let's do a new one. Project name. Uh, web sys testing. So this is just my project. Okay. Um, and I can do new tests here. So this is one test. I can do plus and then I just add a new test. For example, canvas test. I want to test out the canvas tool. And now once I'm ready, I can just do, I can press the record button. So I say, please start recording. And I think it will ask me what is actually the base URL. So what is it you want to test? Well, I want to test this website. I'm not sure this will work now because it probably requires me to log in, but we can try. Uh, now it works in this case, okay. And you see there was the message that IDE is recording. So now everything I'm doing here is being recorded. Uh, and I can, for example, go to the assignments now I click twice. Uh, I can go to assignment one and I can have a look at the rubric. So let's say that's good for now. Then I just go back to my tool and say stop recording. And you'll see that it has recorded a number of actions. It has first recorded that we open a certain URL. So reykjavik.instructure.com slash courses slash 3398. Uh, that's just the URL of the course in Canvas. Then it has uh, set a certain window size. Maybe that's not important, but we can say, okay, the window should be whatever, 1000 times 800 pixels. So we have controlled conditions. 
and then it says click on uh, click on the target click on the element that has link text assignments so that has the text of the link the text between the aid a and uh, start and end tag is assignments uh, and then after that click on assignment one the text assignment one which is here so that's uh, that's a scenario of recorded and I can just replay this so if I do run current test you'll see that it just does uh, the different things it goes very quick so you don't really see it uh, but that's the intention of this testing uh, that it goes as quick as possible because you want to run a lot of tests in a short time now we can do something here that we can also do in unit testing we can do assertions so for example we can say assert assert text well let's first do assert title we want to know that the title of the website uh, I'm honestly not sure whether I'm doing this correct but the title should be assignments cologne uh, web 42 assignments cologne and now I actually have an assertion in here. Let's see again if I run this test whether it actually works. And it says no, this is not true. And we can uh, look at the log. And it says, well, the actual value is assignment one. Because I actually checked the wrong title. I, I'm on this page and the title of here should be assignment one so actually i have written the wrong test here uh, but you can already see you can check certain things like what is the title now if i rerun hopefully everything is fine again no still not probably i just have a typo actual value assignment one did not match something is strange um, probably it's just what I'm typing in here. This is just me not being familiar with the testing tool enough. Uh, but you can do these assertions like everywhere else. So now it worked. Uh, we can add another one just for completeness. For example, you might want to say assert text. So the text of a certain element. And we can now select it in the page. I can say, for example, this one here. should be assignment one rubric uh, and now it automatically has found me a way to identify uh, this element in HTML and this is quite a complete uh, quite a complicated selector in CSS actually so it says find the element with uh, CSS ID rubric 5676 uh, and then it uses the child selector saying select the child with class rubric title and class title and then it finds this one uh, now we're checking that that one should be assignment one rubric and let's run this one last time to see whether that works so it worked and now I've essentially written a test that says from the starting page of this course try to navigate to assignment one and check that the title is assignment one and that the rubric has title assignment one rubric that I've selected the right rubric maybe. So uh, this shows you and this, this was not too difficult. It shows you that it's quite easy to record these scenarios and it's also not too difficult to add these assertions here. So it's very effective to write tests. Um, the negative thing about it is of course as I said, it's limited what you can look at, at certain internal things, it's not too easy. The other problem is it depends, for example, on your HTML code, how the elements are named, how they are structured. Uh, if you change that, it will mess up your entire test suite. So if I somehow play around with the HTML design here, then everything breaks. So that was a short excursion to Selenium IDE. We have as I discussed, also Selenium WebDriver, which is 
uh, which is a similar thing. It's it allows you to write tests similar to the recordings, so they work in a similar way. They just go through things, um, but it's more programming. You don't record; you just write a program, uh, and you can do the same things we just did in in Selenium IDE. You can find elements. You can say, "Give me the element with ID X." Uh, you can do things, you can enter text, you can click, you can wait, uh, but you have more powerful options to do checks compared to what I just did in the IDE. So this is quite cumbersome, it takes a lot of effort, but it's much more powerful than uh, the record and replay. So sort of a trade-off what you can do with these things. Now the last option I'll show you is a very different approach. It looks almost too simple, but it's actually it has been used very successfully in industry by some of my colleagues. So uh, this is definitely something that can be done if you are in the right situation. Um, now the tool that we're looking at is called Sikuli X. Uh, originally it was called Sikuli. It's essentially an automation tool. So it's a tool made for automating tasks on your computer. And you could see Selenium as a similar thing. It automates using websites, uh, but it can also be used for testing. The difference between this and Selenium is that it uses image recognition to, to locate elements. So we don't say find the element with ID X, we use image recognition. Find the element that looks like this uh, and then click on it. It has some strange syntax elements like click on something, but otherwise it's essentially based on Python. So you can write complete testing frameworks, test suites with Python. Uh, and that's something that's very popular with practitioners, of course. They don't have to learn a new language. Uh, and for example, the, the web driver is a very different kind of uh, programming. This is essentially just Python with some extra stuff. And similar to, to Selenium, we could do stuff like enter text, click, wait, uh, and so on. There is no whatsoever access to the system. So the, the system is just running, it's a black box. You don't look at any variables. Basically all the checks you do, you do based on how it looks like. So instead of saying, check that the text equals X, you say, check that there is an image that looks like this. Um, and this is also something that you could easily go through with a customer. It's quite easy to understand what is going on. And again, I'll just do a demo of that. And I do a very basic one, but you can uh, do this much more complicated. Let me close all the other stuff. So let's go back to where we were before. And I'll just write a Sikuli script. So Sikuli comes in its own weirdly looking tool. Um, but I've seen sort of power users of this typically don't use the tool, but they actually use uh, just a Python regular editor like VS Code. Now, what you can do here, and you can look that up in documentation, but there are special things like click. So click on something. And as I said, we want to say click on a certain thing that looks like something else. And for that, we can do screenshotting. So just say, take a screenshot, and say, for example, click here. And now what the tool will do is it will try to find this on the screen and then just click on it. And then we can click somewhere else. For example, we can again click on assignments. So we want to go here. Uh, what happens then is that we load. So you actually have to wait, for example, two seconds or three seconds. Um, and I don't know what's going on here. I don't think there is a problem, but apparently the tool thinks so. And then afterwards, we are on another page, so we can click somewhere new. For example, here. Wait. And then we're here and we want to check something. For example, we want to check that this assignment is published. So we could say, find, find the image that looks like this. 
Yeah, that should be it. I don't know what's the problem here. There's probably none. We can just try to run this now. And the cool thing here is it's actually quite, by just looking at this, it's quite obvious what will happen. Uh, you don't have to be very good at programming. So let's try this. Run. It clicks here. It clicks on assignments. It waits. Uh, it clicks on assignment one. No, see, this did not work. Uh, it should have clicked there. It didn't. And because it did not, it didn't find this image, so our test failed here. Um, and the problem is simply that it clicked sort of under the, the actual link. Uh, and there are tools to change that to say, well, within the image you find, click on a specific spot. Uh, so now it should click on the text instead of the line in between. Let's try this again. This looks better. And now the script completed and everything is green. So the test has passed. Uh, but you already saw before that, given that it hasn't opened the, the new window, this statement down here failed. So it basically said, no, I cannot find this. So the test case fails. Uh, and since, since this is Python, you can just use regular, uh, regular code as far as I remember if you do Python, uh, and write all of that in here. It works, should work reasonably well. So that's another example of what you can do. And there are, there are other things you can do here. This is really just a super quick run through Sikuli. So this is cool. Uh, it has, of course, disadvantages. One of them, which is because of, it uses the library OpenCV, is it's really bad for color differences. So if you want to distinguish colors, it's not a good choice. Uh, the other thing is, of course, if you have a website where you have a lot of identical things, so identical buttons with the same text, then it's really hard because you use image recognition. So if you suddenly find four times the same button, uh, then you have to somehow do something. Most of these things can be solved. Uh, and this tool has been used on productive systems for example, system testing for air traffic management solutions. Um, so it's perfectly viable to do that, but it has shortcomings, of course, to other things. The great thing is really that it does not rely on any language or any, it doesn't matter whether your system is written in C++, in JavaScript, in uh, assembly, in anything else, as long as it has a graphical user interface. So that's good. So overall now we discussed a bit of testing. Tests are really needed and nice to have. Uh, debugger is good to identify error sources. And then we have a whole bunch of stuff that we want to use to avoid mistakes. So before we even need the debugger or tests, we already use things. Um, and one of the elements is for example, a strict mode in JavaScript that simply flags certain things that are known to cause problems. And then there are uh, other things. For instance, a very common thing is to have style guidelines that tell you how to format your code. Um, and it's not just to make it pretty, but it's simply because it's known and has been shown often enough that uh, readable code, pretty code basically is uh, less prone to errors. So if the code is readable, you will not make as many mistakes. Uh, then there's another thing and we'll look at that in the other testing lectures and that's linters. So there are tools that are uh, similar to compiler errors that show you what is wrong in your programming. They just underline things that are bad practice or that are not good. So they can help you already while writing the code to avoid certain things. But we will not go into that now. So to conclude this, uh, you have seen that there is a large variety of testing techniques in the first part. Uh, you can use that at different levels, different contexts. Uh, and there is really not no best fit. So the best thing is to do as much testing as you can and somehow try to do it in a smart way that you cover different parts, for example. I've only covered a couple of examples, uh, mainly unit testing, Mocha and Chai, and we'll probably use that more in this course. And we'll also reuse that later when we 
get to the back end to test our server code. And I've just done a quick run through system acceptance testing through the user interface, just so that you have seen that, that whenever this becomes relevant to you, you can go back and maybe have a look at these tools. Uh, there were two differences that I showed you in the system testing part in Selenium. Uh, we interacted with elements by identifying them through their HTML or CSS. Sequely, which was in contrast to that, just uses pure image recognition. So it does not rely on the software being HTML or any specific programming language. Then we had Mocha as a typical unit testing framework. Uh, in this case, it supports several styles, but it's just an example of a very common unit testing library that you will encounter probably many times in your career. Uh, and unit testing comes with assertions, and in this case, we use the specific assertion library, which is called Chai. So that's it for this part. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll do a summary of everything we have covered and then probably do repetitions or clarifications of any of that material. So thank you for listening.